Welcome to Fusion Tonight. Fusion is a worship talk show produced in the studios of First United Methodist Church in Cedar Falls, Iowa. We're going to laugh, sing, pray, give, and learn together. Now, scream and yell like he's somebody famous. Here's our host, John Cooper. Welcome to Fusion Tonight. I'm your host, John Cooper. How are we doing tonight? So good to see everyone. Did everyone have a good Easter weekend? Fantastic. You found all the eggs and your salvation, that part too. Very happy day. Very good, Sam. It was a great weekend. I'm so glad to see everybody here. We have a great show for you tonight coming out of the Easter break. Hallie Ernst and Maddie Luria are our guests tonight. Very excited. Yes. Talk to two integral people of our, our youth here at First United Methodist Church. But before we talk to them, before we kick off the show, we got to talk about all this crazy stuff that keeps going on in the world, going on in the news. I don't know if you saw this, but a woman in Texas was issued an arrest warrant because she had some overdue library books. Yeah. Turns out the only thing that's going to be read in her house is her rights. This was exciting news. Everyone's favorite groundhog, Puxatani Phil, it was announced he is a proud dad of two babies. Yeah. He went from predicting an early spring to predicting late nights. <laughs> Parents get that. That's fine. <laughs> and finally, this has just been causing so much debate in Christian communities all across America because Donald Trump has been selling God Bless the USA Bibles. Just what United Methodists need. Another expression of faith poaching our members. Yeah. <laughs> there was like eight punchlines. That was the only one I could tell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a fantastic show for you tonight. But Ben is not here, noticeably absent, so give it up for canned music while I walk to the desk. <laughs> All right, time to do some church business. So our favorite, one of my favorite segments here at First United Methodist Church and at Fusion Tonight is our open mic time. If you're more familiar with the traditional style of worship, this looks a lot like joys and concerns. So this is your chance to raise up anything on your heart, your mind. We can talk about it, pray about it, and then hopefully be about it. So with that, the floor is open. Just raise your hand. I'll call on you. Yeah, we already got one. Yes, pray for, uh, there was a really nasty earthquake. Uh, I didn't see the full story, but yes, prayers for them. As, uh, that's a lot of turmoil over there as they try to rebuild. And um, I don't know any numbers on um, casualties or injuries, but hmm? nine, casualties. nine casualties. So definitely prayers for, for everyone in the area as they, yeah, as they, they deal with that and, and digging through all that. So yes, prayers, prayers of Taiwan. Anyone else? Oh, we have one in the back. Yes. Uh, so last week's guest, Derek uh, Thompson, his audio book just went live on Monday. I don't know that because I did it. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 our very own Slade Hovick, uh, our voice actor here at First United Methodist Church, uh, records a lot of books. And yes, he got to record Sheriff Tony Thompson's book, Any Place But Here. So if you got to be here last week and see Tony and get a book, um, it's a it's a wonderful read. If you don't have the physical copy, you can now purchase the audio book and audio book and listen to our wonderful Slade uh, read it for you. So highly recommended. And congrats to you on on a great gig. So anyone else? That is quite all right. All right, we're going to go into an attitude of prayer, and I'll announce it beforehand. When we go to do uh, the Lord's Prayer, I want to do this from now on. Pastor Karen did a wonderful exercise with us where I turned my mic off, and instead of having one person kind of lead the cadence of the Lord's Prayer, we instead say it all on our own, out loud, at our own pace, and it just creates what I think is one of the coolest atmospheres for saying that prayer. And so when we get to the Lord's Prayer... I'll lead us into it, but I will shut my mic off. And instead of trying to follow me or anyone else, I really want you to take that time to say it 
in your own voice um, because I really truly feel it just it it really connects in a in a different way. So, with that, if you'll please join me in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and holy Father, we are so blessed to once again gather in the space to be with one another as we come to worship you. Lord, we just had the the honor, the privilege, the joy of celebrating Easter uh, this past Sunday. Easter Sunday is everything to being a Christian. It's everything to our faith. It's the reason for everything that we do. It's, it's the hope. It's the perseverance. It's the trust we have uh, that tomorrow can only be better. The knowledge that no matter who we are, where we are, what we've done, what we're doing, what we might do, the knowledge that in spite of all of that, we are so beloved. We are so loved and we are forgiven. Before we even make the mistake, we are forgiven because you gave us your son to die on the cross on our behalf, to give us the gift of unconditional love. The concept of unconditional love is one that's sometimes so difficult for us to live out in our day-to-day life, to truly and honestly love one another without conditions, without wanting or needing anything back from another person, to just instead extend them love, grace, and forgiveness just because they are our brother or sister in Christ. You did not ask us to be perfect because in your eyes, perfection is something we achieved the moment we took our first breath into the world. We are created in your image, and it's so hard for us to see us that way, but that is how you see us. That is why you sent your son to walk amongst us. May the spirit of Easter be one that lives with us, not just on one Sunday, but every day, that we may strive to see one another as that perfect creation, to see one another as you see us. Lord, as we pray for those things, we also lift up prayers that have been spoken tonight. We lift up Taiwan, who just experienced an awful earthquake as, as rescue workers and first responders do everything they can to locate any and all persons that are missing or hurt or killed as people begin to try to rebuild and, and restore life to any sense of normalcy. May those in Taiwan and outside rush to their aid with selfless hearts, with unconditional love, to not ask, what will I get if I help, but to just offer help, because you would. Lord, let us lift up joy and success in our very own Slade Hovick, who was given a wonderful opportunity to record an audio, record the audiobook for, for a book that has been quite popular. Uh, may all of us uh, in our careers and our passions be so lucky to have wonderful moments like that where we are rewarded for our hard work with, with amazing opportunities that, that remind us uh, of our talents and our gifts and remind us that uh, even when it doesn't feel like it, we are, we are walking uh, along the right path. So Lord, as we pray about the spirit of Easter, as we pray for uh, our successes in this room, as we pray for the tragedies around the world, we do so with open and and unconditional love and open hearts. We do so with the prayer that your son, Jesus Christ, taught us, saying, All right, we would normally do another song. Again, very absent Benjamin is tonight. So instead, we are going to show you a video all about our mission of the month this month. And it has everything to do with our rice meal kits. So uh, April 13th, 13th, April 13th, there's a chance to sign up for a couple hours to join us in our effort to feed 21,000 people. 
Chris is going to show you a video that goes into a little bit more depth. But at each doorway, we have two giving jars. During the video or on your way out of service, I encourage you to give as your heart calls you to give to what I think is an absolutely wonderful cause. Without further ado, here is your offering. All over the world, people are hungry. Economic hardship, natural disasters, war. All of these things contribute to people not having enough to eat. But on one day in April, we can change that tragedy for 21,000 people. We won't know who they are. We won't know where they are. We just know that they are, and that's enough for us to invest a few hours in a one-day push to pack emergency food supplies to feed 21,000 people. Here's the deal. We buy the food, we pack the food, and Midwest Mission will ship it wherever it's needed. Refugee camps, disaster sites, shelters, Ukraine, Turkey, Sudan, Gaza, Haiti, the US, wherever. What we need from you or a few dollars from your pocket and a few hours of your time on April 13th. Give now at aboutfirst.com slash giving. And sign up to help at the Welcome Center. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event. They're going to be talking all about their upcoming mission trip. So we have one of our youth leaders, and Haley Ernst, and one of our most outstanding youth members, and Maddie Larea. Please give it up for them now. I have to ungrease these wheels. Every time I kick it back, it like goes, <laughs> it goes way too far away. Hallie and Maddie, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. You guys have your matching shirts. Love it. We didn't plan it or anything, no. No, total coincidence. <laughs> matching shirts, matching hair color. Total coincidence. You guys have an upcoming mission trip, and I was hoping you guys could tell us what the mission trip is going to be and where it's going to be, why it's important. So whoever wants to go first. Yeah, so the youth don't know much about what we're doing, and neither do I, because they don't tell us a list until June, like a month before we go. Um, but we are going to Henderson Settlement in Kentucky, um, in Franks, Kentucky. Um, I went there when I was in junior high, so it's been over 10 years ago. And I remember having a blast. Um, some people made chicken wires for garbage cans I don't know what that was for, but <laughs> it, I think it was to keep the critters out or something, um, or for compost. But in Frakes, Kentucky, they do everything. They have their own farm there. That That's how they feed the people. They um, have a kitchen in the middle of the um, town, and all the people come in, and they'll, they'll eat that food and all share um, stories and stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's a very very poor town, but it was built off of um, a United Methodist pastor. So it's it's all been, it's all Methodist, it's really cool. Um, in the mountains, uh, the kids are gonna have a blast. Um, there's no service, so they will have to disconnect from the world and it's gonna be amazing for them. Um, but we can really talk about the past mission trips and how Maddie felt after them, if you want. Yeah, I was, I'm, you, you can take my job. That's um. pretty much all I know for, for Kentucky. But yeah, they'll find out in June um, what we're doing. They'll give us a list, whether it's cleaning up the yards or um, when I was there, we cleaned up a house for a nurse to move in. That way they could take care of the people that live there. Nice. So Maddie, you've been a, a youth at this church for a long time. So how many mission trips have you been on and what has been so amazing about getting to partake in those trips? Oh, uh, so this will be my third mission trip. So I've been on two, the past two summers, actually. And 
honestly, it's like we get to stay at these wonderful places and it's like just like seeing all of the people that we get to help like you never really know who we're gonna like be around like in Colorado we were talking to the homeless community and in Wisconsin we were talking to all kinds of different people within that community so just getting to know all the people that we get to help is so fun. Absolutely do you ever feel like you know Cedar Falls isn't the smallest town, but kind of small town Iowa feel where maybe we don't get to see everything the world has to offer. Do you feel that these trips have kind of exposed you to a lot of different types of people that maybe you wouldn't have encountered here? De definitely. Um, in Colorado, we actually, I think it was like the most densely populated like homeless street in Denver. And they kind of just threw us out there with a group of people that we didn't even know. And we just talked to the homeless community and like in Cedar Falls and, you know, like I'd never really traveled before. So it was really like hard to see it. But just knowing that they were out there and like I just opened my eyes to like what all is in the world that we don't see here in Cedar Falls. Absolutely. Um, for you, as you've you've been just one of the youth going, and now you've been a youth leader that's kind of in charge of corralling this new generation. How has it impacted you being on both sides of that fence? Um, I think it impacts me more being the youth leader and taking these kids to different areas. Like Colorado was a big eye-opener for them, and the whole goal was to treat those who are homeless as regular people because they are. But usually when we see them out on the streets, we kind of turn away from them. We don't want to talk to them. But the goal was they are people, and we are here to help them no matter what. And sometimes they just want somebody to talk to because you'll see people walking around, and they're talking to themselves because they don't have anybody else to talk to. But if you just go up to them and talk to them like they're a normal person, you, you just see their, their face brighten up and seeing the youth kind of come out of their shell, um, that is a huge impact on me, knowing that I am allowing them to go to different places. Um, I try to make it as cheap as I can because I know it's so hard to afford anything these days. And um, just being able to bring that to them and show them, like, you, you are better off than you think you are and there's people struggling more than you think, and you can always lend a helping hand no matter what. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm glad you, you mentioned it, it does cost money to go on these trips to, to get all the youth over there. Can you tell us a little bit, next week is one of my favorite Wednesday nights, can you tell us a little bit about the Pancake Fundraiser, Pancake Fundraiser and what we can kind of expect next Wednesday? Yeah, so um, vehicles are not cheap, gas is not cheap, um, so what the youth do is we make pancakes, we try to get some fruit topping and maple syrup, whatever you want to put on a pancake, we will try to have it there. Um, and that's just donate what you can and that goes straight to gas money, food on the, tr to travel. And some youth actually can't afford the trip, so it also helps them get there too. Absolutely. So aside from, uh, like gas and vehicles, and contributing money, is there other ways that our church can donate either time or efforts to make your trip uh, more of a success? Yeah, typically, um, no matter where we go, they give us a list of things that they need. Um, this place is different because they haven't actually told me what they need, um, but in the past, they've ne needed clothes for Colorado, so we um, got a bags of clothes and um and we passed out water bottles and stuff to the homeless. And then last year, it was board games because we helped out um, kids that have, like, summer programs for daycare for free for parents that have to work and can't afford daycare. So we um, brought games to them um, and blankets as well. Awesome. Is there, aside from, you know, there'll be a giving basket or jar mm -hmm. next Wednesday at the Pancake Fundraiser, if we want to make other donations, is, do, who's the, do we just go to talk to you directly? Is there a link on a website? Where else can we go to kind of see what you need and make sure that we're providing everything that we can? 
Yeah, you can actually um, reach us at youth at aboutfirst.com, and that goes directly to Lauren and I, um, and we can answer any questions you have about the mission trip specifically. Um, this year, I am actually having, so we go with my sister who lives in Des Moines. She's a pastor there, and um, we take our time. We take turns on who plans most of it and this year I said it's your turn so <laughs> she has most of the information but I can definitely reach out to her for any type of um, questions that you might have on how you can donate and help out more absolutely do you know about how many youth currently are getting ready to embark on this journey I do we have 10 youth in the past we've only had six and I said my goal is to get between 10 and 15 so well awesome um, I'll ask you each one final question. Uh, you can pick whoever goes first. What are you looking forward to the most about the trip this summer? Um, it's kind of hard because we don't really know what we're going to do, but I think just getting to stay in the mountains for one and then just, like, helping everyone down there again, you know, that's my always been my favorite part. So just getting to know a whole new community. I think mine is disconnecting from social media. That is, that's a huge one. Um, there's so much bullying and all that on there, and everybody wants to know what everybody else is doing. And having everybody have to, you have to disconnect. Like there's no service up there whatsoever, and and then you you are just present, being present. And when you're in the mountains, you just feel like you're closer to God. And where we're staying, like right when you walk outside. It's just the mountains. And um, down below, there's a cross where we're going to hang out and do our um, programming at night, so our devotion. So it'll, it'll be a really good time for the youth. Well, absolutely. Well, I'm so excited uh, that you have 10, that you get to go do this. And I'm excited for pancakes next week. Um, but yes, I pray that everybody here reaches out so uh, it's What's the email address again? Youth at yep. aboutfirst.com. Yep. Youth at aboutfirst.com. Yep. So youth at aboutfirst.com. You can send Lauren and Hallie an email and say, what can I do to help? And they will be glad to give you a list. Uh, I'm really excited that as a veteran, hopefully there's some new youth and you can kind of show them the ropes of what it looks like and uh, go out and do good work. And even though you're going to be unplugged, I hope you guys bring some pictures back. Because oh, we we're, we're excited to see what, <laughs> what y'all get into. So, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Hallie and Maddie. <laughs> All right. Well, that is our show for the week. So, hopefully, we can contribute well to this mission trip. And, and like I prayed about, be in that spirit of Easter and always be looking for how we can see one another the way Christ sees us. Uh, the way they're going to go help people in need and, and see them through that lens. So we have gathered. I hope that we've grown, and now it's time for us to go be Christ for one another together. We'll see you next time.